So we went on our honeymoon, and my husband really wanted to go to Italy. Really wanted to go. I didn't want to go. <laughs> I didn't want to go because I'd been. I wanted to go other places, but he wanted to go because he was a chef, and Italy is like a food mecca, so he wanted to make his hajj, so he wanted to go to Italy, and I said yes. Not because I love him, but because like you can find alcohol pretty much anywhere. <laughs> So we go, and he nerded out. He made a map, a real eat-seeking map of the whole country. And we didn't do the tour stuff. We went to like the foodie, chefy places. We went to the region where they grow the grapes that the goats eat, the special goats, and they take a dump, and it makes the fertilizer that makes the mushrooms. If you eat them, you get detained. Like we did a whole thing. And on like day five, I was like, I can't, uh, I can't do this anymore. I can't eat anymore. I want to pick something. I cannot be carted around anymore like a prize pig. I want to pick, I want to participate in this. I want to pick the restaurant and I want to order in Italian. My husband goes, you want to pick the restaurant and order in Italian? I was like, yeah, I've seen Lady and the Tramp. Like I know what's going on. <laughs> the picking of the restaurant wasn't that important to me. It was speaking Italian in a restaurant was important to me for one simple fact. I didn't like the idea that as an American, I would walk into some random part of Italy into a random restaurant and have some random Italian waiter think that I expected him in his own country to speak English, okay? <laughs> Although he probably should, like that or Spanish or Mandarin, like something that like a lot of people. So, but I'm hyper aware of how we're perceived when we travel. As an American, and I am very, very proud to be an American, I know that people are watching us. Yeah, you can cheer for that, that's fine. <laughs> They have questions. A lot of them hate us because they ain't us. And they want a reason to discount you. And that goes for whoever you are, whatever you look like from anywhere. When you travel abroad and you fuck up, people will decide, oh, all of your kind are like that. And I couldn't stomach that because I am so proud to be an American. And I wanted him to think all the great things about Americans that we already think about ourselves. So I wanted... <laughs> To walk in and have him think that we're educated and open-minded and kind. And if I'm shit-canned and embarrassing in public, I want people to know I'm Canadian and I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm all set to speak Italian. I've got the like translator thing. I'm all ready to go. And he hands me a menu and it's a steakhouse. I'm like, I'm going to do this. It's going to be flawless Italian. He's going to be so impressive. Everyone's being impressed with me. They're going to vote me mayor of Italy. <laughs> Open it up. And I opened the menu and all of their steaks were listed. <gasps> in grams. There was a 500 gram steak, what the fuck is a gram? I was so busy focusing on coming off looking amazing and the conjugation and the pronunciation. I forgot the rest of the world uses metric to measure. The rest of the world uses fucking logic. Tens, one hundreds, yes! We here in the United States, we like to measure based on a dream! <laughs> and I'm staring at this 500 gram steak and the waiter's looking at me, my new husband's looking at me and I'm trying to do the conversion math in my head. But my only frame of reference was like, okay, well a gram of cocaine is like that. <laughs> You know what? We're just, we're just gonna do an eight ball of steak. <laughs> the table. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Grazie mille. I love it. Nashville turned up for that cocaine joke. <laughs> oh yeah. I heard a lot of guys laughing like, don't let the vineyard vines fool you. I fucking love rails. <laughs> I may have little whales embroidered on my shorts, but I like to fucking party. Yeah, you can seer sucker my dick. Not the South. So I got married about a year ago. I've had about a year to think on it, ruminate on it, marinate on it. And I think what's fascinating about getting married is it's one of the few acts you can go through in this lifetime where once you do it once, you come out the other end an expert. Totally omniscient, you know everything, you do it once. 
You come out the other end, you know everything about weddings, every detail. The problem is nobody wants your shitty wedding advice. <laughs> Like, no one. Other women will ask you advice as a way of ingratiating themselves or perhaps bonding with you. We as women are often taught that if we act like we don't know what's going on and we need help, other people will find us more palatable. So you say to other women, like, are you got married? I'm getting married. I don't know what's going on. What color is white? Is my foot in a bear trap? Help me. <laughs> And the other woman thinking she's helping you and doing something right, she's like, oh, okay, uh, you want advice? Great, okay, so for my wedding, what I found helpful, but the whole time she's talking, all you're sitting there thinking is, oh my God, that is a tacky ass wedding, you're a dumb hooker. <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. Because every girl thinks every other girl, oh, kind of fucked it up, and you'll do better. <laughs> you won't. And on that note, I've come humbly offering some wedding advice to you, Nashville. <laughs> One thing you must know, the wedding industry is not designed to bring two loving souls together under the state and or God. It is designed to extract your money from your wallet, pit you against other women, and make you feel like garbage fire. That's what it's there for, okay? There's a litany of requirements, social, cultural, traditional, all these things. Everything's got a price tag, everything takes up time. And I'll tell you what, I paid for my wedding personally. So you can best believe, I took a red Sharpie and I went down that list of bullshit. And if it didn't involve me taking off my shoes, drinking tequila, or listening to Garth Brooks, we did not fucking do it. <laughs> That's right, Nashville. The theme of my wedding was feminism. No one had a good time. <laughs> but there's all these things, all these requirements, all these traditions, these things. And I took a comedian's like microscopic lens to each thing. And I was like, is it weird? We're not doing it. So the first thing I refused to do, I would not wear a garter, okay? <laughs> Some of you cheered. Some of you were like, I'm still wearing mine. What's up? <laughs> what the fuck is up, Hollywood? <laughs> I'm glad that not everyone cheered for that because it sets up my next point perfectly, okay? It's important to me that me and my audience be on the same mental page for the rest of the set, okay? Right now, in 2019, more than it was five minutes ago, right now, it's the best time it's ever been to be a woman in most states. It's the best time. <laughs> I said it, I meant it. The best time, okay? But overall, we are the most heard, the loudest in our message, the most unified. However, with this newfound sense of feminism, I have noticed that there's this weird splinter faction of feminists, of women who get angry at other women when they deign to disagree with an opinion. And then it's not enough to agree to disagree, they want you fucking dead. I am talking <laughs> drawn and quartered in a Twitter town square. <laughs> because you hurt their feelings. So I get up here as a joke, no harm intended, it's a funny time. And I get up here and I'm like, don't wear a garter, it's trashy. And I get that same blogger in the back of the room like, female comic shamed my wedding day choices and I don't have the social wherewithal to confront her in person so I'm just gonna hurl these insult turds from behind a faceless avatar. <laughs> so. So. Since we're all so hurt and gutless all the time, I'm gonna stick to my initial notion. You look like a saloon hooker. Okay? Go get married at a Six Flags. <laughs> Girls, there's gotta be a middle ground where someone disagrees with you and you get the fuck over it, okay? You don't have to hate her.
One woman's affirmation of her life choices is not the negation of your existence. Be better than that, okay? <laughs> we can't walk around calling ourselves queens. I'm a queen. She doesn't like my top. <laughs> who cares? Move the fuck on. And you know who does this better? Men. They agree to disagree all the time and they're fine. You see it all the time. Guys are like, he's my best friend. I don't like his politics and he's stupid. He's a son of a bitch, but... <laughs> I love, we didn't get along at first. We went out back, we had a drink, we fought, we had a little bit of sex, and we were good to go. Good to go! That's what we must do, girls, just move on. You wanna wear a garter? Wear it. I'm not gonna be at your wedding. You wear it with pride. I wanna see. I wanna see every one of your wedding pictures, you, garter on, dress hiked up, holding a shotgun, like. <laughs>